look at a course. So we have created a special course for you, which is called the demo course for FCAL. Okay. So that's your course. Everyone is enrolled as a student. <coughs> okay, so we go down to the course and then FCAL. Okay. So when you begin with uh, to orient, orient you from SMART 2 to SMART 3, what you will see is basically the course template. Okay? And the most important button here is the turn editing on button. So that one in the earlier system is quite hard to know when you are editing or not, right? In this system, when, when you are editing, it will change from green to red. So red means it's editing mode. So the students cannot see it when you are editing it. Okay? The moment it goes back to green reversion, it becomes uh, uh, visible to the end user. So you have green and red. So, okay, we are going to start by turning editing on. That's the first thing which we do. Turn editing on. The student will not see this. You won't see this in your system. But once we uh, revert you back to the lecturer mode, you will see, you'll be able to do these functions. We do it after we finish this first part. Okay. So now the turn editing button turns on and it changes to red. Okay. We will show you, we will begin with the, uh, basically the course blocks. So this one is earlier. It allows you to teach either by topic or by date. You can see. So when you want to modify it, Zul will click on the date, modify. It's just one click. You don't have to go out of the system and into the system again. It's one click. You change to topic one. Okay, so you click and you cl enter and it's done. There's no need to, earlier we have to go out of the system and then a box will open up, you have to do a dialogue in the system and then go back. This one is straightforward. Okay, so that's the topic one. Okay, now let's go to the basic function to achieve your one, seven, three and two. That's the basic thing which you need to achieve. So the first thing what you need to add is your course synopsis. So the course synopsis is added from here. You click add an activity or resource. Okay, and now that the icons have changed slightly, so this was where we uh, had, um, uh, I mean all of the lecturers has the difficulty identifying the icon. Last time, the fail, everyone passed, but the one you have uploaded, but you had used the wrong icon, right? So it was a PDF icon. In this one, it's actually a course synopsis icon. So you can scroll down to the icon. Yeah, synopsis. It's the icon is actually called synopsis itself. So on your synopsis, you have a, a blue color bar on a PDF, okay? So you click on synopsis, okay? So you add the course synopsis. You just add it. It's all drag and drop in the system. You don't have to go back to your folder, just pull. Okay, so you have something, Zul, to upload? So Zul will upload the course synopsis. It's just a PDF file. Upload any PDF file. I have my... Just IB six one four three. You type. Just search in your system. IB six one. No, in your system. In my system email. in your email. Just go to IB six one four three. Six one four three. Anything will be okay. Template. Just add something. Will anything? Anything? Just add any file. Any file. Just add any file. Okay, we are just going to add a template file because we are using your system. So I'm going to click. I don't know what's in the file. I just click and I upload it there today. Okay, so uh, refresh. Refresh. Okay. So you add the file, Zul. You add any file. Okay, I just add a file. Okay, wait for a while. You just copy and paste. So you write course synopsis or table for course synopsis. Then you add in your description of the course. Okay. Okay. So for this system, because it is designed for mobile friendly apps and you want a student to view the entire menu on the first login. So when they log in and they click the course, they should see. You should always click on the button which says display description on the course page. Okay, so there's a button there which says display description on the course page. So when the student opens the browser in their first instance, they will see everything in one stream. Otherwise, they will have to keep on click, go out, click, go out. So usually students don't like to do that preference. So they prefer one stream. So once they see everything, they'll see all the 14 topics or 14 lectures in one page. 
So we have a button which says display description on course page. That's something which you need to click if you want to make it mobile friendly. Okay, so so we have display description on course page. Okay, so click. You just cannot copy. Cannot save. Us. Too big. Okay, you you download a file from. Hang on. Huh? Yes. Just get a file. Just get any PDF file. Where's the file which I made for you? The file. Okay, so I just. Can I just see? Just just go to MQA and download a file. MQA. Go to MQA. MQA. Okay, file. Just put a uh, COP, COP, COP file. Okay. Yeah. Keep some file ready. Yeah. Quality assurance document. Okay. Download. I just download a file. Like this. Okay. Download. Right. I just download a file and it download add transfer. Okay. Save. Okay. Save. Okay. Save. Add. Done. So you save the file. You just copy and paste the file. Okay, save. Upload already, right? Okay, done. Okay. So th for this one, right, when you upload the course synopsis, there you will see something known as activity completion. Okay. There are two buttons which are basically uh, important if you want to gather analytic from the student. Uh, I mean from the student community which you are teaching. The first one is the uh, display description on course page and the second one is activity completion. Now when you are uh, basically giving a course synopsis, the idea is in the earlier days when we used to use pen and paper, we actually use, give them the physical copy and we ask them to sign saying they received the course synopsis. Do you remember those who taught earlier? Because we need to get a proof that they received the course synopsis. In this one, you can track whether they download the course synopsis. So basically what you do is you click on completion tracking and then you see show activity as complete when condition are met. You're given three options. One is, Zul, can you scroll down? Okay. This one is do not indicate activity completion. If you do not, if you click on that, you will, you cannot track the student's uh, system in the system because it does not track the student. The other one is manually mark the activity as complete, which means the student has to view the activity and manually mark it. Okay, so the, the important one is show activity as complete when conditions are met. So then no student can say we did not receive table four. Otherwise, they will say, we didn't download, we could not download. But when they click on that, when you click on that, basically all the students receive the table for. So legally, to protect yourself, please select this one for almost everything, except for the activity which doesn't carry mark. Yeah, this one should be selected. Show activity as complete when conditions are met. Then the student... Conditions are met means, okay, for this one, the condition is they have to force download. So when they click on the uh, on the icon, it will force download table 4. When they click on your lecture, it will force download. When they force download, they will see the system, where system will, uh, I will show you how it tracks. So that means you can make out, uh, for example, you have a class of 60, you can basically enumerate the number of students who download and who did not download. So you can track changes in the system itself. Okay, so, okay, so we save. Save and return to the course. So you save. Okay, so if you refresh your system, you should be able to see the. Save? Save, sir? Not save? It's a small file. It's a small file. It's a small file, actually. Yeah? So there's a limit for that. Okay. Just, just check this one, whatever. Just click. What is that? Okay, okay, okay. You, I have many in my table. I will just save a file. I think you save this to as PDF. Yeah. Save as PDF. Save as PDF. Make a copy. Download as PDF. Okay, one second. We just wait for the server. Okay. Just shift. Okay, transfer. Big file? Small file, right? Just pull it. Drag and drop. Drag and drop. Okay. Ah, okay, done. So save, huh? so save it. 
say when return to the course. So if you refresh your screen, you should be able to see this course synopsis. Can you refresh? Just go back to the system. Add an activity or resource. This is uh, similar to the smart tool. File. File and then you add. And then you upload. So you have your so you have your synopsis one and then you'll have seven lecture which is seven content where you can also add some videos if you need that's a seven so basically most of us we use lecture note as the seven okay so you just add so uh, usually according to the blended learning uh, basically the template it's go it's a good practice to put in your introduction your learning outcomes the LO upon completion of this lecture you should achieve and then you put in your whichever domain you want to achieve your cognitive psychomotor effective and you can also put in your CTPS you can add to that introduction part so the student knows what is the domain okay so you have your appearance and then you go down display on the first page display on the first page okay and then activity completion again for all lectures please add show as complete when it is met show activity is complete so that will enable you to track the students whether they are actually using your lecture or not or they are actually are they downloading or not so for example if you found a weak student in the class or maybe they are lagging behind maybe they didn't download your lecture note at all so you can basically track those students using the system okay so that's we go down and then you save and return to the course Okay, so there is a reason why we are doing the analytics. You see, I'll explain to you why we are doing all this analytics system. Because when we are applying for the award, you know, you go for Anugra, which one you, went, you all went for last time? Akri, right? Akri. So, okay, what are the judges looking for? They are looking for, they are not looking for content, how beautiful the content is, how, they are not looking for that. Of course, they want you to put in original content, but what they are looking for is student interaction. The analytics is very important. With this system, you can uh, print out the analytics and add it to your course file. And then you can basically, when you go for competition, you can show, yes, I interacted with the student. With the earlier system, we cannot. We have to write a script and extract it from the server. With this one, it's in the, inbuilt into the system. Okay, you can track analytics. Okay, so you have your lecture note. So if you see, your, if you refresh your system, you should be able to view your lecture note. Okay, I just want you to click and download again for analytics. Just click and let it download by itself. Okay, so just click it. I need to capture your information. So you have your course synopsis, you have your lecture note. Okay, according to the blended learning uh, tutorial which we received last time, I think uh, some of us attended, Hafizi was there, right? It's very good to have a comment or feedback for each topic. Okay, so you just, if you want, you just add. So you go down to the topic one. You just add an activity or resource, you can add a comment, a comment file, okay, a comment or a feedback, just give a feedback, okay, feedback, you add feedback. So the student basically has a place where they can communicate with you. And for analytics, I mean for student engagement, this is the best thing. Of course, we do 1732, but for a best practice, we, based on our peers from other universities, they always have comment uh, or the feedback for each lecture. So for the feedback, it depends on you. If you want to give marks for feedback, you can click show as complete when condition are met. But if you don't give marks, don't click on that button. Otherwise, it is penalizing the students. If they didn't feed, give feedback, no marks. So you can give your feedback, feedback for this lecture. And for the completion settings, activity completion, don't click on that button. Just say, show, let the student mark their own or the other option. So feedback is free for the student to either engage or not engage. Unless you have a specific kind of class in which you want the student to give feedback, then it changes. Okay, so save and return to the course. You have your feedback. You can put in a feedback. You just copy and you can add feedback to for each lecture. So this will basically save you from um, because, because some of the lecture we miss on the feedback part, feedback and the comment. So you had the feedback too. Okay, so you have your lecture. Synopsis feedback. Let's show you how to add assignment. Assignment is very simple, as as the same as before. Add activity or resource assignment. So you have assignment, and then you add. Right. Okay. So assignment one, just 
right description okay display description on course page and then that's it so if you have any material for the assignment like it's a tutorial you can edit here if not you just go down and you and you have a completion date okay so suppose you set off a cutoff you can set off the cutoff in the this one as normal so if you said after submission 5% mark deduction you can basically add the instruction here but for today we are not going to do it because it will skew the dates okay the dates will get changed okay and then you have ex uh, basically the completion setting go to completion setting okay okay when conditions are met we are basically complete okay so you say 